entire life, people told me I would be a great television reporter. Even when I was a little kid, they said it was what I was meant to do. And I agreed completely. I was sort of born into the world with these skills that made me good to be on TV. I loved listening to the sound of my own voice, which I think is a really good one to have. I was naturally curious. I remember taking a spoon and putting aluminum foil on it and interviewing people at holidays. Like, I was that weird kid at your Thanksgiving that's coming up. And I was a news junkie from a really young age. My dad used to drive us to school every morning, and we would listen to WWJ News Radio 950, Roberta Jacina, and I'm Joe Donovan. And it would be news and weather together on the 8s. I still love it to this day. And then coming home from school every day, this was my after-school routine as a young child. Plate of snacks, Oprah Winfrey, get ready for Channel 7 Action News at 5. So no one was surprised when I became a television reporter, and I was pretty good at it. It came very easy to me. Similar to a lot of you in this room who probably became something that you were told you were meant to be for your entire life. You became a teacher, an accountant, an engineer, because the things you have that make it come easy to you, you were born with. So imagine the fear I had when I didn't want to be a television reporter anymore. I was pretty early into my career, and of all things, I wanted to be a business owner. I knew nothing about business. And then I wanted to be a florist, and I knew nothing about designing flowers. So I studied. Google and YouTube is how I taught myself. And then someone took a chance on me and said, hey, would you ever do wedding flowers? And I said, oh, I'd love to. I'd be great at it. I had no idea what I was doing. And by a miracle, a true miracle, I pulled off a wedding. Um, this is a little bit about my business sense at that time. I took the client's money and then quickly went out and spent three times that amount on the product for the wedding. <laughs> and I was ready to be a boss. I was ready. Driving home from that wedding that day, I confidently informed my husband that the next day I was going to go into the television station and quit my job to be a florist because I had made it. Um, if you're married, maybe you've heard this line before, but his response was, first there was a pause, and then he said, I love you so much. <laughs> but I don't think now is the time. I don't think we're there yet. He's a numbers guy. He's like, let's watch the numbers. So for two years, that's what I did. I would report the news in the morning in blizzards on top of the Mackinac Bridge, the craziest things you could imagine. And then I would design your wedding flowers on the weekend. And I got pretty good at it. Oh, I got pretty good at it. Um, and we designed weddings all over the state of Michigan, but in that time, we moved up to Petoskey, our favorite city in the state, and we bought a tiny little farm, and we sort of got our, we, our feet underneath us. We grew flowers, we grew lavender, and then came the moment when I was ready to actually leave that TV job, and I was terrified. I was terrified because that's what I was supposed to be doing. Everyone had told me that's what I was meant to do. I had the skills. And that fear came from a place that maybe you can relate, that if you leave behind the thing you were meant to do, what makes you good at it is getting left behind too. I'm here to tell you today that is not the truth. At the farm, we started hosting workshops. We would teach people how to make holiday wreaths, we still do, Mother's Day arrangements, all summer long people come from all over the country to learn in our floral design workshops, which is pretty cool. And in teaching these amazing people over and over and over again the same material, I developed a system called Focal, Filler, and Flare. I wanted it to be easy for people to learn. And in teaching Focal, Filler, and Flare over and over and over again as a floral designer, I learned that all of us have Focal, Filler, and Flare. Let's start with Focal. Watch as I design this arrangement in my garage wearing Carhartt bibs, because you guys think it's winter here, but it is truly winter in Petoskey right now. And you're going to see Focal blooms are heavy, big stuff. So think hydrangeas, sunflowers, or roses. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let's design. Here we go. Notice how the shape of the arrangement comes together, and there's nothing else in this face, just some hydrangeas I cut from the yard. Beautiful. What is your focal? It's that stuff you were born with. It's that you're a natural-born communicator. You took to numbers from a young kid, from when you were little. You always have had a way with teaching, so you became a teacher. You were patient. You cared about people, so you became a nurse. Those are your focal strengths and they're not going anywhere, even if you leave behind nursing or teaching. Next in arranging, 
filler. Watch the filler and you gotta watch it closely. I'm gonna add some golden ferns here and some cedar I cut from our yard. Filler is the stuff that fills in the gaps around the focal blooms. The focal blooms, nothing is taken away from them in that moment. What's your filler? Your filler is your life experiences. Your filler are your relationships, both the really great ones and the ones that failed. Your filler is a state championship team you were on in high school. Your filler is your coaches, your mentors, the people and the experiences that changed you, but they don't define you. Filler is that you studied abroad. Filler is that you went to a Big Ten school and you loved every second of it. Your filler, it works around your focals and adds a little bit to it. So 99% of you in this room would say right now that this is a really beautiful flower arrangement, but the difference is made in the flare. Oh, I love flare, I'm so excited for this part. <laughs> you gotta keep a close eye, it happens quick. I'm gonna add a big thing of flare on the side because I'm weird. But then I add little tiny bits. You can't really see them, but there's a difference at the end here. Yes. Flair is what we all need more of. Flair is that unique thing about you that people are talking about when you're not in the room and it's positive. It's that thing they say you'll never guess. You'll never guess. You'll never guess that he's a pilot. Would you ever know that? He's a pilot. Or she's an incredible home cook, like the best I've ever seen. She doesn't even need a recipe to whip something up. Or he knows everything there is to know about Harry Potter. Or she's going to walk into this room in two seconds and have the best hat on in the coolest shade of lipstick. It's sort of her thing. That's flair. We all need more flair. So now we've talked about focal, filler, and flair. Ten weeks ago, I had a baby. And thanks. He's pretty... He's cool. And we don't yet know his focal filler and his flair. I think when you're 10 weeks old, your focal is you cry and you eat constantly. But as it emerges, there's nothing I can do. If you have kids and you're in this room or you have siblings, you know that we come hardwired into the world with strengths. That's his focal. And his filler is going to be life experiences that I can't protect him from or predict. I can only ride the wave. And then his flair, which I'm going to encourage him to embrace and get more and more of. Flair is your weird thing. Embrace your weird thing. So what do you do when you can operate and know and understand your focal, your filler, and your flair? As cheesy as it sounds, you can really do anything. If you have that tug to go do something different, go do it. What makes you uniquely you is in the arrangement of who you are. It's not going to be left in a desk drawer. It's not going to be stuck in a cubicle when you leave. It's coming with you. So when you drive home today, I encourage you. Think of your focal, your filler, and your flair, and then have the fear out of your head, out of your way, and go do whatever the hell you want. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>